instruments idly strum to accompany Spanish dancers or singers in cabarets. But one man, whose guitar you hear now, placed it with the concert instruments of the world. His transcriptions of masterpieces give them new enchantment, and he has inspired classical composers to write for the instrument. George Bernard Shaw once asked him, have you sold your soul to the devil in order to play this way? His name is Andres Segovia. Music, says Segovia, is the most beautiful dream of the human soul. His own life has resounded in music, and the thrum of the guitar has given him a tranquil philosophy that he expresses in this program. Andres Segovia's fellow conversationalist is an authority in music and recording, Jack Pfeiffer. Segovia, as I've heard you play today, I get the feeling that you are very involved with music. It, uh, it occurs to me that perhaps through your travels, uh, your efforts to raise the guitar to a position of prominence, uh, your meeting with various cultures and various peoples, that you have developed a, a philosophy which might be of, uh, of help to one. Well, I... <clears throat> I think that uh, my philosophy about music and life are together the same, because the music influences my, influences my life entirely, to such an extent that I think that from the morning to the time I go to bed, I am resounding in music, and sometimes from the bed time to the morning also. I think that the music is the most beautiful of all the arts because more or less the other arts are concrete, too concrete. Even the poetry has to deal with the meaning of the words. In music, the soul is absolutely free. Music is like transcending into another sphere, then. Yes. It is the most beautiful dream of the human soul. In your vast experience with, with successes, are there any which stand out in your mind as being conspicuous? Well, maybe I will remember an anecdote that happened to me when I was young. A beautiful queen of Europe uh, made me the honor of playing for her. And I went, and she liked my playing very much. But I think she was not very much accustomed to listening to music. And she congratulated me in a very nice way, but he wanted to compare me with something. And she began by telling me, 
You play, your man, you play beautifully. Beautifully. You play like a, like a, and she didn't find. Like a, and finally, finally she found. Like a little music box. Then I bowed. And I told your majesty, I did not yet arrive to such a perfection. And the answer was, what a modesty. <laughs> this day is a kind of success. This is a true, true success. <laughs> did you have experience with, uh, well, with, <clears throat> with ordinary people as far as uh, success is concerned? Well, in order to prove what uh, we were saying about the beginning of the guitar, Yes. and the beginning of my stubborn career. I remember that once I went in Granada to the hotel, and the day after, early in the morning, I began to practice. At the same time, I called the maid to bring me the breakfast. And when she saw me in pyjama, and playing so early in the morning. She was surprised. She looked at me and she said, Oh, sir, so early and already so gay. <laughs> they associated it with, with the entertainment of the yes, evening, exactly. is that right? Exactly. The instrument you have been playing, it interests me very much. Is it a special one? Well, it was meet against the... Uh, uh, what uh, anybody could expect. Uh, it was made in Germany, not in Spain. Oh. When I was for the first time in Germany in 1923, I met the maker of instrument, string instrument, Mr. Hauser. He died already. And I was surprised of uh, his craftsmanship. I invited him to come to my hotel and to examine the guitar I had at that time, which was Spanish. And he did. And he did with such a soberness and tenacity that he spent about three hours taking measurement and everything that could help him. One year later, he sent me to Switzerland where I used to live at that time. A guitar which was exactly like my own, reflected in a mirror, but without soul. I mean, without the quality of voices and the volume that I require. After a while, I sent back the guitar to him, congratulating him and telling him to persevere, and he did. Every year since, he kept sending me to Switzerland one or two guitars, which were every time better than the previous one. And finally, in the 1936, he sent me this one, which is the best guitar in the world. So it took him 13 years to develop exactly. this guitar. Exactly. And you feel this is the best guitar in the world? Yes. The quality, the mellowness of uh, its voice and the volume. I play with orchestra, and the orchestra doesn't cover the instrument. Since the guitar is such an orchestral instrument, how does it compare with the piano? With the piano? I think that the piano, it is a neutral instrument. The light of music coming to it doesn't break in different colors. And uh, instead, coming to the guitar breaks in many beautiful orchestra sounds. A friend of mine who was a great writer used to say that the song of the piano was like speech. The song of the cello, like an elegy. And the song of the guitar, it was a song. Your countryman, Manuel de Falla, he wrote course for the guitar. But very little. 
Really, he wrote very little for anything, for any instrument. But what he wrote is marvelous, of intensity and of nobility. I know he was a very strong personality in his writing, but he was uh, weak physically. Uh, yes, you knew him. What was he like? Weird. He was small and thin. He, he had only the skin and the soul. In Faya's uh, homage to Debussy, uh, selection which he composed, it, was it dedicated to you or...? It no, it was simply dedicated to the guitar. It is a very strong feeling of the greats of Debussy with the repercussion of the greatness of himself. Did he utilize the quality of the guitar to its utmost in writing this composition? Yes. Uh, we could say that uh, it sounds a little shy, but this is in agreement with the, uh, the character of Falla. Perhaps you could perhaps you could demonstrate yeah, what you mean. Certainly. any more eloquent expression of music than that. It is very brief, but very deep. Yes. This music, I understand, as you've played it, means a great deal to you. Certainly. I was a very good friend of Falla. There are fewer, though, today who are true <coughs> artists than than there were, say, in the 18th century. Exactly. Do you know, each century has very few great artists. And this century is the same. 
in spite of all the noises that make the other. The, um, the dissonances. Yes. One writer has quoted you as, as saying that uh, many of the modern composers put together parasitic dissonances. Yes. And they thought perhaps you were isolating the guitar from, from many talents who could add to the guitar repertoire. I don't mind to isolate the guitar from those microbes. <laughs> there. I don't mind. You don't mind? No, I'm not at all. The guitar doesn't seem capable of producing dissonances, though. Yes. Oh, very much. Is this a part of its... But it is a straight instrument, the gait and speaking, or if you like, singing, straight to the, to the heart of the public who has sensitivity. To go back, what do you feel is the mission or the responsibility of the interpreter in, uh, in music? The first quality is the probity. I don't know if this is an English word. Yes. To be honest. To be honest, music. yes. But nevertheless, I remind that once I said that uh, the interpreter act a little bit like uh, Jesus when he went to Lazarus. Lazarus was lying in the tomb. And Jesus said, stand up and walk. From that moment, Lazarus belonged so much to Jesus <coughs> than to his own parents. And the interpreter goes to music, which lies in the score, and tell it, stand up and leave. From that moment, the music belonged as much to the interpreter than to the composer, his own father. You have mentioned Villalobos, Hector Villalobos, the great Brazilian composer. He has written much for the, for the guitar. Is his music representative or has he a special approach to it? He was the only composer <clears throat> who knew the guitar. He played it in his youth. Uh, and all the studies that he has written are beautiful. There are 12 dedicated to me and also a concerto. And uh, the contribution that he made to the guitar is very high. Manuel Ponte, mm -hmm. the Mexican composer, I, I understand has special place in your affections. A special. Because I loved him. He was a kind of San Francis of Assis of the music. He never gave a single step for himself. And his music is really magnificent. At least the one written for the guitar. In your vast experience with, uh, with mankind, your travels throughout the world, uh, your familiarity with different cultures and different peoples, you have certainly had occasion to meet many people. Can you tell me about some of them? Yes. I remember, I knew uh, Bernard Shaw, who, after listening to me, asked me if I had sold my soul to the devil in order to play in that way. Then I met also Anatole France. Equally, I knew very well D'Annunzio and uh, Toscanini, and almost all of the great men of Spain, of my youth, and nowadays. 
What modern day people have you have you met? Modern? Well, I am not so old. <laughs> I mean, presidents, queens, kings, that sort of. Oh yes, but I didn't did not remember I did not remember them as great men. They maintained their own individuality. They were great on account of the position they had in politics, but they were most of them very innocent. When did you first get the idea of, of learning to play the guitar? Well, I usually I answer that by saying that before my birth, but uh, really when I was 10 years old, eight or 10 years old, then as I received from heaven the gift of music, I went to the cello, the violin, the piano, but unfortunately, those instruments in the little village where I used to live were played by very bad musicians, and they made me run away from their instruments. But I found the guitar, which even played by the people, preserves the beauty of its melancholic sound. Did, you, did your family encourage you in your enthusiasm for the guitar? No, the contrary. Because always when they saw which, which eagerness I took the instrument, they were afraid that my only future will be to in the saloon or the tavern with wine and women and dancers and singers all the year. And uh, it took me a long time. Then how did you learn to play a classic guitar? Well, because I, I um, look for music all around, and finally I found music written by Sor, by Arcas, and by Targa himself. And then when I was older, I asked all the Spanish well-known musicians, as Falla, Turina, Torroba, and so forth, to write for the guitar through me, I see. putting myself, myself at the service of them in order to explain to them how to write for the guitar. You received then, uh, in your efforts to learn the guitar, no enthusiasm or no support or encouragement from anyone? From anyone. I had <coughs> to, to seclude myself in my room and to play with enthusiasm and to build the new technique of the guitar, based in the technique already made by Tarrega. Then you essentially, you taught yourself. Yes, I was my pupil and my teacher. Do you recall when music first became an influencing factor in your life? Well, yes, first when time. I was in a little town, and my mother took me to my home, where I lived. For several years. I was very sad because really the arms of my mother were my cradle and they took me from my cradle to the and uh, I was crying and my uncle was singing something to calm me down. It was an old Spanish song saying to play the guitar, Fran, he did that. With my little arm, he took my little arm. And requires not any talent, Fran, but strength in the arm, Fran, and uh, patience to persevere, Fran. In that, remain in my own memory, so strongly fixed that still I remember it. And that, it was, the, the, that was the first seed that I received in my mind of rhythm and melody. This has been a conversation between Andre Segovia, the classical guitarist, and Jack Pfeiffer, a scholar in music.